Hi guys, welcome to another video. So in the ergonomic keyboard world, you're going to see two different kinds of form factors. Remember, an ergonomic keyboard is supposed to keep your wrist straight. So with a fully split keyboard like this one, you can keep your wrist straight by placing them shoulder width apart. Now there's also this ergonomic but not split keyboard where your hands and your elbows are kept at an angle where your wrists are straight. So we've already taken a look at some of the most popular fully split keyboards like this Korn and the Lily 58. So I decided to take a look at the, probably the most popular ergonomic but not split keyboard, which is the Revyung 41. And hopefully uh, this video can help you make a decision whether uh, you want a fully split keyboard or something that's ergonomic but not split. So this review is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to compare the Revyung 41 directly with the Korn because these two are very similar keyboards, just the Korn is split, whereas the Revyung 41 isn't. So let's get started with the layout. Layout, in my opinion, should be the most important factor in your decision to choose one keyboard over another. As always, I'll post a link in the description to the website where you can go compare different keyboard layouts and print them out to see which one fits your hand the best. So in this case, the Revyung 41 has 41 keys, whereas the Korn has 42 keys. The main difference other than being split and not split is that the Revyung 41 has one big thumb key, whereas the Korn has two little ones instead. Personally, for me, I think six thumb keys is the perfect number of thumb keys for me. So I prefer the Korn's three on each side for a total of six over the Rev Young's total of five thumb keys. Now my biggest complaint with the Korn is that the thumb stagger wasn't, I'm not the thumb stagger, the pinky stagger was not aggressive enough for me. And it was difficult for me to reach the cue. Um, so the Rev Young 41 actually has a similar, if not the same stagger, pinky stagger as the Korn. But because of the angle my hand is at, it's actually easier for me to reach the Q and the P um, rather than on the corn. So personally, I think the layout is a little bit more comfortable on the, the Revyung 41. All right, now let's get into a quick little sound test and a comparison with the corn. So as you can hear, they sound very similar, if not the same, which makes sense given that they're both play cases and they're made out of the same material. So this next area is where the Revyung 41 really falls short, and that is ergonomics, because with a fully split keyboard, you can put them at a vertical angle, which is also known as tenting, uh, which improves ergonomics and makes it more comfortable to type on. Now the Revyung 41, because it's in one piece, it's not split in half. Tenting just isn't possible, which makes it not as comfortable to type on and not as ergonomic. All right, so moving on to price. So this corn I built a while back with Elite C's, no LEDs, no, no OLED screen, and no rotary encoder, ran me about $85, not including um, switches and keycaps. This Revion 41, again, no LEDs, no uh, rotor encoder, no OLED screen with Elite C, ran me about $70 because you only need one microcontroller instead of two. So final thing I want to mention real quick is that the Revion 41 does not support chalk switches, whereas the Korn does have a version where it supports chalk switches. So if you want a low profile build, do not look at the Revion 41. So what I recommend the Revion 41. Well, if you like 40% keyboards, if you like your keyboard to be in one piece and you don't like tenting, then I'd say the Revion 41 is a great choice for you. But if you're like me and you like 40% keyboards, but you also like tenting, then between these two, I'd probably go with the corn. 
Now, where I think the Reveillon 41 makes it interesting is budget wireless builds. If I wanted to make a wireless corn, it'd, run, it'd probably run me about $110. If I wanted to make a budget wireless Reveillon 41, it'd probably run me about $80. So if you don't have a lot of cash, but you want wireless, the Reveillon 41 is probably what I'd go with. So that'll be it for me today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.